Every period of the last uh, few months or year, uh, we get asked lots of basic questions about guns. If you're involved in the gun trade, uh, they seem a bit ba very basic questions, but the newcomers to the sport, when they're buying a gun or when they're having lessons, it seems that they're interested in. So we thought what we'd do with this series is we'd start at one end of the gun and go through to the other and go through all the little questions that we get asked over a period of a year. So we thought we'd start with the stock. TSC is brought to you with support from CCI Clays, Yielded Guns, Ely Cartridges, Browning Guns, Bowman Traps, Braden School and Charles Stanley Wealth Management. Now, obviously the stock in the gun it's the piece of wood on the end of it, and that is the stock. Now, the stock is the piece that actually dictates where the gun shoots. Um, a lot of people assume that the comb height of the stock dictates where the gun shoots. It actually doesn't. The comb height dictates where your eye, which is your back sight, where your eye is in relationship to the rib. And the object of the game is, every time you mount a gun, your back sight, which is your eye, should be there. OK, so if your back sight is there, then you're looking into the back of the action and you won't be able to see what you're doing. So it tends to make you lift your head. If your back sight is up there, it's much too high and makes the gun shoot a bit low. So, the secret of buying a gun, whether you spend two or three hundred pounds on a gun, or whether you spend two or three thousand pounds on a gun, the basic idea is to get the gun that fits you as near as possible off the shelf. Now, the other thing that um, people find interesting is about where the gun shoots, whether it shoots high or low. Now, again, people assume that it's this measurement. It actually isn't. It's these three measurements here that dictate where the gun shoots. And they actually call it the pitch. And the pitch of the gun is the difference between that measurement and that measurement. That is the heel, and that is the toe, and that is called the centre, for obvious reasons, because it's in the middle. So... When a gun is designed, the toe measurement must exceed the heel measurement because what that measurement does, it does that. Now, on rare occasions, we get people coming to us that have had guns fitted by an expert and they've taken the toe off of a gun. They come in and say, I've had my gun fitted, I can't hit anything with it. The reason being, they've taken the toe off and it makes you go and shoot down there. So we go back and we put a little bit of packing in there, we put that back to that, and all of a sudden they can hit things with it. Um, a lot of the problems is that you get, particularly with ladies, that they're getting their shoulder bruised. So it's nice and easy to take that point off. That point is not what's causing the problem. The thing that's causing the problem is generally because they're standing with their weight in their back foot and their hip out. So if you're having a problem like that, what you need to do is seek the advice of a professional shooting instructor, somebody that knows what he's talking about, because he will then get you standing correctly and holding the gun correctly, then you'll still have the pitch on the gun. The next thing that we get asked is about stop length. Now, when you stand correctly, your head should be three fingers from the front of the cone. So the object of the game is when you mount the gun, that is where your head should be. If your head is way back there, there's two reasons. A, the stock is too long for you, or B, you're mounting the gun badly. Again, a professional shooting instructor will tell you which it is. If your head is right off there, Again, it's 99% of the time the stock is too short for you, but again, it could be that you're standing too sideways and mounting it badly. Uh, to measure the stock length, 
You go from the trigger to the centre. That is your stop length. OK? If you have a side-by-side -side with two triggers, you always measure from the front trigger. And this is why people get a little bit confused sometimes if they're comparing a side-by-side -side measurement to an over and under measurement. If a side-by-side -side has two triggers, your stop measurement will be about three-quarters of an inch longer than your over and under measurement because the, the, tri the front trigger is about three-quarters of an inch further forward than the back trigger. OK, so uh, the next thing to talk about is cast. Um, the cast on the gun is a measurement. You'll hear people talk about left and right-handed guns. Technically, that's not correct. You have cast off and cast on. You always measure the cast from the right shoulder. So, on the right shoulder, if you bend the stop that way, that is cast off. And if you bend the stop that way, it's cast on. Now, the object of cast is very simple. Again, to get your back sight exactly where it should be. So, that is your eye. If you mount the gun, your eye is there, it should be there. So what you do, you put some cast off on the gun, which moves your eye to there. If your eye is over there, then you have a bit more of a problem, because you're rolling your head. Now, there's two ways that you can do it. Um, you can always spend a lot of time getting the person to mount the gun correctly, or you put cast on. On is coming in towards you as a right-handed person. So you do that to bring your eye to there. Uh, we had a situation a while ago, and I don't know why it is, but nearly all left-handed people have a habit of rolling their head sideways. Here we are nearly all left-handed, and we had... Um, a chap came to see us to buy a gun who was very bad at rolling his head to the side. Um, the only way we spent a lot of time with him trying to get him to get his head going forward, to mount the gun correctly, so we got his, his eye to there. But whatever we did, we still had his eye was still there. So what we did, we gave him a gun with cast off, which Brought his eyes to there. We took him out, he shot with it, it was absolutely perfect. He went away, a couple of weeks later, we ran his back and said he'd been to a professional gun fitter who said that I'd sold him completely wrong gun because it was right handed. There was a reason for it, but he wasn't very happy, so we gave him his money back on the gun. But interesting to see how the professional gun fitter stops him rolling his head. But you know, there, whatever uh, you measurements you give to somebody, there is always a reason for it. And the reason is that the back side should be there. And that's what we're always trying to achieve. Over a period of time, we would often say to somebody, particularly if they're novices, um, that you're buying your first gun, fitting your own to somebody is a bit like learning to drive a car. We will tell you the way we think you should be doing it. You will then adopt your own method. So over a period of three months or six months, if when you've adopted your own method and your eye happens to be there, we'll put a little bit of cast and take it to there. But it, it's a little bit of a compromise. But at the end of the day, everybody is working to get your eye over your hip. From once you get that, you can then forget about the gun and just concentrate on looking at the target. 